All right, everyone, welcome to Mid City Neighborhood Organization's monthly community meeting. We hold the second Monday of each month, and we're glad you're able to attend. Uh, if you haven't seen our newsletter or wanted to get a copy of the agenda for this evening, I just put a link to that in the chat. And uh, sorry, I'm going to have to. Ms. Armstrong, I'm not going to be able to answer this call because I'm <laughs> also running the meeting at the moment. <laughs> if Do you need some help with something? Oh, we could hear the council member earlier when you did a sound check. And we could see him as well. So, all righty. Um, All right, sorry, I could, uh, wanted to make a few announcements before we get started with the agenda. Um, yeah, we can hear you, Mr. Council Member. Can you not hear us? Mr. Banks? I'm not here. That's out. Slope all the way. Slope all the way. Hello? Hi, Chris, it's Sonia and Council Member Banks Hoffman. We don't have any sound and we can't see Council Member Banks. Uh, there is a dialing number if you'd like to use that. Give us that. We'll try that. I'll, I'll do that. What's the number? What's the number? Sorry. Give me just a second. Your call cannot be completed. Can he see me? <laughs> oh, so, guys, I'm sorry. We're trying to get this thing working. It's not working. I apologize. Is it the three one? Hello. Hello. Oh. All right. Sorry for the technical difficulties. I believe we can hear the council member now and see him. Can you hear me, sir? Sorry, I cannot, you need to do the star six, eight to unmute. Look, man, technology is fabulous when it works. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. It kind of sucks when it doesn't, but um, I can hear you over the phone. I cannot hear you through the computer, but I can see you. So I'm going to look at you through the computer and listen to you through the phone. Fantastic. Okay. Great. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, it's February. Happy Carnival season. Happy house float season, everyone. Welcome to the MCNO monthly meeting. Uh, a few announcements from our organization before we start our agenda items. Uh, I want to congratulate our new board members that have come on and our new executive members. Our board decided to elect myself to serve as the president again for this year. So thank you very much for your confidence and your vote. Uh, welcome our new vice president, Mindy Falkowski. Uh, long, uh, previous serving board member. Um, our other executive positions, Thomas Ecker serving as chair for this year, Secretary Alvin LaBeouf, and uh, Becker Rutledge again as our treasurer. So thank you again for everyone serving in your roles as our executive members of the organization. Uh, another announcement, we are working to fill an upcoming vacancy for the Mid-City Security District. 
there will be a member rolling off as their term expires at the end of March. We're seeking interested uh, members or wanted to nominate anyone. The requirements are that you be a registered voter that resides within the security district. You can see the map of the district on our mcno.org page and use the top menu, menu and go to map. Um, if you've ever had your assessment and you've been assessed a security district fee, you are resident with inside the security district. But you also, um, the members of the commission serve terms of three years each and there are two year term limits at each time. MCNO currently appoints, I believe four members. Uh, and there's no restriction on residency um, specific to City Park Neighborhood Association for this seat. So please email us at info, info at MCNO for any interested parties or nominations and to be considered and looking to appoint uh, hopefully by the time of our next board meeting at the end of March. Um, also, we are, uh, if you want to be involved in the selection process or have any input, our Legislative and uh, Mid-City Security District Committee will be conducting this search and vetting candidates if we receive multiple candidates. To tell you the truth, we don't necessarily get a lot of contention. Uh, we'd love to make this more of a fair and open process and invite you know, your public service to serve on this board. Um, the district manages a budget of just over a million dollars to add additional security patrols to mid-city and if you would like to have input on how the district or direct those funds to provide public safety please this is your opportunity to serve so please get in touch with us and our committee to uh to help search to fill these vacancies so and i believe that's all of my announcements from our organization currently um Councilmember Banks, do you want to start us off this evening? Thank you so much. Good evening again, guys. Let me apologize for my lack of uh, technological acumen. Uh, it's good to see you all, and I truly appreciate you all uh, taking the time to hear from us. Um, we are uh, trying to do all that we can do to address, I know, many of the concerns that you all have. I know that uh, the, uh, the car break-ins have been just ridiculous across the city. We are diligently trying to come up with some solution to that. I wish I had the, the silver bullet or the magic wand or the golden elixir to be able to just pour on that problem and make it go away, but none exists. Um, we are trying very hard, though, to come up with a comprehensive plan to incorporate all of the, the parties to try to be able to address uh, not only that issue, but the other issues related to juvenile crime and uh, crime in general. So I am open, and I, I'm not speaking for Joe, but I think he will agree that we are open to hearing anybody that has a plan or a solution. There is no pride of ownership or authorship here. And if there's something that uh, someone can suggest that will help us get through this, we're by all means amenable to, um, to listening. Um, the COVID pandemic is still raging. Regardless of what some may want to believe, it is not just going to go away. Uh, I would strongly encourage each of you, if you have not gotten a vaccination and you are eligible, to do so. If any of you are eligible at this point and have had difficulty getting it, please call my office. I've got two staff members assigned to trying to find vaccines for people. So we're intentional in trying to get as many people inoculated as we can. The hope being that we can have New Orleans be the first city in America to have everyone vaccinated. The idea that this thing is going to fade away just isn't realistic, and we've got to do all we can do. We need to use all of the tools available to try to flatten the curve. So I strongly encourage each of you to uh, wear your mask, wash your hands, social distance. If you can get a vaccination at this point, please do so. Um, and when it is your tier, to please do that. Um, we, we, we have taken very substantive action to address the upcoming Mardi Gras. I know that there are folks that, uh, that have some reservations about that, but the reality of this is, is that uh, those things are necessary. 
Uh, crowds have been proven scientifically to be uh, super spreaders. So we have taken the actions necessary to try to diminish those kinds of problems moving forward. So um, as always, I mean, if there is something that I can assist with, uh, my office is open and available. I cannot make every meeting, and I apologize for that, but I have staff at every meeting. So we are available uh, whenever you call. And if there is something that you need help with, I cannot promise you that we will fix all of your problems. But what I can tell you is that we will listen and try. So if there is something that I can assist you with, um, by all means, feel free to call. And then finally, um, I heard you talk about the, uh, the, the, the float, uh, the house float parade. Uh, that is a phenomenal thing. So thanks to all of you in Mid City that have, uh, that have participated. And I encourage all of you to uh, enjoy that new phenomenon. I think that's going to be a, a forever part of Mardi Gras moving forward. And it is a COVID safe way to get the Mardi Gras spirit. So I encourage anyone and everyone to want to do that. And Layla, I got to tell you, your background is phenomenal. So um, thank you for that. So uh, if there are any specific questions for me, I'll be happy to answer that. I am in the middle of some craziness. Um, I'm sure you all have seen the news, so I apologize. I'm going to have to leave, but I got to go deal with this stuff. Uh, we have issued a statement relative to the summons that I received. At no point did I threaten anybody. Uh, I attempted to help someone who uh, I thought was in a crisis, and that is the extent of it. The only thing I'm guilty of is being a human being and trying to help somebody who I thought needed help, and that is the extent of that. So uh, we're going to deal with that through the appropriate channel. But uh, please know that your calendar is not going to be uh, adversely affected, I don't think, by this. So if there are any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer them. And if not, uh, I am going to jump off, but I will have staff continuously on the call. And you got my wingman. Joe and I work very closely together. Uh, we sit next to each other. We're across the hall from each other, and we support each other uh, in most instances. So at the end of the day, um, if I'm not here and I can help, Joe can. If not, please reach out to me and let me know. So with that, if there are any questions, I'll be glad to try to answer. Questions for the council member directly? Even if you don't have anything at the moment, we can definitely copy and get in touch. Was there something, Mary, that you had? Well, you're on mute. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Can. Um, I don't know if this is in uh, Councilman Banks' district or Councilman Jeruso's district, uh, but have there been any plans made about the bike lane changes on Bienville? I actually have an update on that, um, direct from moving New Orleans together. I have a contact information. They're going to be soliciting some public comment and have another pre-construction meeting uh, coming up shortly. So um, I'll have that contact information, people, unless you want to add something else, Council members. Please, I am, uh, let me be 1,000% clear. I am 100% in favor of making the city um, less carbon dependent. So I support bikes. I support people, the, the, the benefits from the bikes, the exercise and the lack of carbon emissions. I am 100% in support of that. However, I think we got to make sure that the bike lanes or um, they work within the neighborhoods and on the streets that they're proposing. And there has been some, uh, concerns that some of the places where they want to put the bike lanes may not be the best. So I would strongly encourage you when they have that public meeting to please be there and voice whatever your concerns are, because I can tell you from other neighborhoods, uh, there has been some pushback. And while I don't think anybody will argue against the value of doing it, or argue that um, the safety that comes from having uh, regulated bike lanes is, 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 is something that we ought to not do. The fact is they've got to be able to fit and we should not be, um, we don't need to be creating problems while fixing one. So I would strongly encourage you to, to participate in that. The final report has not come to us. And even when that final report comes, I think that there's going to be much discussion on it because I can tell you, um, I haven't had much, much issues with Bienville. Nobody's really raised concerns about Bienville. There have been others though that have calls with real concerns that we have been going back and forth on. So I know that before that final thing is done, that would be massive discussion. There has not been a lot of uh, publicity about what they're talking about on Bienville. And I think that
that's where people are not giving comment because they don't really know what's going on yet. I just ben, put I out some... have my folks follow up with them to mm -hmm. try to get uh, to get a communication to the neighborhood organization so that you all can disseminate it. I want as much public input on this as possible. Again, I don't want anybody. Look, I've been beat up by the bike people and I'm anti-bike. I'm not anti-bike. What I am is that you got to make these pieces fit. So I want to make sure that what's done doesn't negatively impact the neighborhoods where it's going to happen. So we will make sure that they reach back to you with that information as to how you all can have your voices heard on your neighborhood. These folks are, again, I'm sure well-intentioned, but they don't live there. So the people that live there ought to have the bigger say-so as to how this goes. That's my opinion, and that's how I'm proceeding. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I just, I just entered some contact information in the chat for uh, Moving New Orleans and their contact person, Daniel Jartez, that I've reached out to this week. Um, we don't have a final design. They're still completing and going through their design phase. So I don't think they have, they're not ready to fully engage for further input. Um, they did solicit input from a meeting in November when I guess that was a large group meeting about multiple thoroughfares and multiple different uh, areas of the city that were going to be designed to restructure for bike lanes, but they're still soliciting input. So please reach out to uh, daniel.jartez at nola.gov and moving New Orleans at nola.gov. Have they reached out to you as a neighborhood association? No, I just made sure to uh, put a notice in their ear to please use us as a channel of communication for that project. Well, we will send them an official communication that they include you on their discussion uh, and actually have a meeting with you all. I think that that's only fair. So we will make sure that that happens. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Council Member. Chris? Okay. Chris? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, this is Bob. Is uh, Councilman, I'm on the phone. So is Councilman Jeruso also available? Um, yes, I'm sir. Here. Oh, okay, yeah. I just wanted to, to let both Councilmen know that we will be reaching out uh, uh, both at the phone number, I guess, that the city provides to his office and by the email link to see if they have any uh, recommendations for that uh, vacancy on the Mid-City uh, Security District Board. So if they want to be proactive and talk to their staff about anybody they could suggest. Okay. So I'll, I'll be sending something out in the next, uh, the, within this week. Thank you, Bob. Okay. okay Thank thanks. you. Thank you. Any final questions for Councilmember Banks? Going once, going twice. Thank you so much, sir. Great, greatly appreciate your time. Well, thank you. You all be safe. Wear a mask, save lives, and happy Mardi Gras. Take care. You as well. Councilmember Jeruso, do you want to give us an update on District A, please? Sure. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Jay's right. We do work a lot together, uh, uh, primarily because our districts obviously are right next to each other. and We get along well. Mary, to the question you asked, remember after what happened on Marconi that I amended the um, road ordinance so that if there is a road diet, there is supposed to be a neighborhood meeting. So um, that should be in the offing in case anything's happening on Bienville. And of course, as Jay said, we're happy to follow up on that as well. Um, you know, Jay also mentioned crime. And I think the way I tend to think about this is these are and questions. What are we doing with the police protecting us, but and all of these other things. And as you all may have seen, um, Council Member Moreno and I are going to offer legislation this week about putting the library millage, uh, the full amount back on the ballot for October. So that will be on the ballot at the same time that all of our, us are up for re-election. You know, I think if, if we're gonna talk about um, all sides of, of how we protect the public, making sure that we're looking at things like mental health, looking at fully funded libraries, looking at other options that are available are just important. Um, so, you know, it goes through a process with us. We have to vote. Then it goes to the bond commission. It comes back to us for one more vote. And then we ultimately will put it on the ballot uh, for the fall elections. Uh, next thing I want to talk about very quickly is probably beginning about four to six weeks ago, we got some phone calls from Bienville about noisy trash pickup. And those persisted for a couple of weeks. Um, Four, which is um, the entity that picks up trash in that area, 
has changed its schedule and is also um, using different trucks as I understand it. And, and in the last two weeks, I've not received a complaint from any neighbor there. So I view that as a positive step in the right direction. And we certainly are aware that uh, particularly, it seems like in District A, Holly Grove and Mid-City have some more dumping and sanitation issues than other places. And so we wanna make sure we keep our eyes level with that. The next topic is uh, energy bills. We had a meeting last week with energy. Um, we still are getting some folks who are complaining about their bill and what happened. Um, you know, energy chalks it up to sort of two things. One is a higher rate they had to use as a result of some of their uh, plants going down, but that also claiming usage skyrocketed for people between November and December, and that's what created some sticker shock. Uh, I have a number of constituents who dispute that. And so if you have a bill that, uh, that you're not happy with and doesn't look quite right, please send it to us. And we're happy to forward that on to energy and work with you in trying to get that right. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about um, uh, a little bit was the budget. We got the budget numbers for the end of um, December. And preliminarily, a couple of things of note. One is uh, property tax collection was obviously up significantly from 2019 because of the reassessments for about 60 to 65% of the city. Um, obviously, sales tax collection conversely was way down. I think we projected being roughly about 240 million in sales tax collection. We were close to 150 million, which frankly, considering the the birth and swath of the pandemic is actually pretty amazing. So averaging about $12 million per month in sales tax collection as opposed to 20. The big differences um, last year at least were um, getting some reimbursement money via the federal government and the state to help plug the hole. And we had some sizable one-time contributions from Harrah's and from the Four Seasons. Obviously, um, we're watching with great anticipation what's going on in Congress right now and that $1.4 trillion deal, um, getting money directly to the cities is a big deal. We want to make sure we have that. And, and there also looks like there was a surplus that we ran last year. So I'm curious about that and whether or not the intent there is to help with issues this year as well. So I know I covered a lot of ground, but you've heard a lot from me and Jay tonight. And I know... Uh, you have Representative Willard and uh, Senator Peterson here as well to talk about her campaign. I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody may have and or, or anything else going on in District A. Any notable committee meetings coming up recent uh, coming up soon? Anything tackled with uh, utility or telecommunications? We had we had a special utilities committee meeting, Chris, last week, as I said, on the energy bills. I know Councilmember Moreno is also working on um, the renewable portfolio standard, trying to get that to a good place so we can take that up. Um, and as Councilmember Banks said, reducing our carbon footprint and emissions as a result of, of pushing that standard forward. Um, we have our public works meeting towards the end of the month. That's our sewage and water board quarterly report. And the two main focuses you'll hear from us are billing and power, what's going on with both of those. I'm trying to think, um, you know, council member Banks continues to call a series of meetings on crime. We had the big meeting, I guess, two weeks ago now, or maybe even last week. But I think he's going to start splitting it up um, sort of issue by issue as we go forward. And I just got the council agenda for this Thursday um, and I was going through it. But I, unless Claire tells me I'm wrong, which, which, is, which is the case, um, I don't think there was anything super significant on this agenda coming up. So um, nothing, nothing right now of, of, of big note other than. Um, you know, obviously trying to make sure sewage and water board is giving the people what they want and then also working on that renewable portfolio standard we've been talking about for the past year, year and a half. Any questions for the council member? Okay. All right. Thank you again for your time. Council All right. Yours, so. Thank you. Great city, everybody. Have a good night. All right. Um, can we move a little bit out of order? I know uh, Senator Pete, Carter Peterson had some other 
meetings this evening. I want to know if she wanted to go ahead and introduce herself this, tonight. Uh, that's fine. I won't jump Representative Willard, and I, he was here, so I, I'm, I'll be fine. Okay, great. So, so wait. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, going down our other members, Stephen, did you want to jump on now or wait to the end of the meeting? Uh, Chris, I'll, I'll go ahead. Uh, I'll, I'll be brief. Uh, this is Stephen Mosgrove from the Mayor's Neighborhood Engagement Office. Uh, just a couple of things I want to highlight. Uh, first is uh, this Thursday, our city's Department of Public Works will have uh, the pre-construction community information meeting for the North Lopez pedestrian bridge project. Uh, so we'll see you virtually um, at six o'clock Thursday. Also be on the lookout uh, later this month for a pre-construction community information meeting for the Mid-City Group B infrastructure project. Mid-City Group A has been going on for about a year and a half and has a little more time on that. And, and Group B will start uh, in March. Um, that's all I want to share. I want to let you get on with your very busy agenda. Thanks, Chris. Thank you so much. We're looking forward to a lot of information with the uh, Thursday's meeting this week. So thank you so much for setting that up. Uh, moving forward, uh, representatives from Warren Easton about their campus expansion plans. Hi, this is Regina Wilkins. Um, thanks for having us tonight. I am going to share my screen and our board president, David Garland, will talk to you all about a possible expansion that we are pursuing. So I am going to share my screen one moment. Okay, and if you all can, can you hear, see our expansion slide here? Absolutely. Great. Okay, and then I'll turn it over to David Garland, uh, the president uh, chair of our of our board foundation. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for allowing us to be with you this afternoon. Um, Warren Easton doesn't really need much of an introduction to Mid City since we've been there since the very beginning. Um, one of the things that we have talked to you about over the years is the fact that Warren Easton is an A-rated school, very, very successful, and has um, students have a difficult time getting into Warren Easton. Um, each year, we take in about 250 freshmen, and we'll normally have between 2,000 and 2,500 eighth grade students who apply to the school. Of course, we select them by lottery, but for every one that gets into the school, we have about nine that are not able to attend. Um, there is an opportunity for this school to expand and create what we believe will be a ninth grade academy. And people who live in this city are well aware of the building that's in the 3000 block of Canal Street directly across from Warren Easton. It is the old Meadows Drawn College, and I presume it was other things in its past. And it's been um, vacant at least since uh, Katrina. I have no idea before that, but I know it's been vacant since Katrina. We have started looking at the possibilities of obtaining that building uh, and converting it into what we're calling the ninth grade academy. That would allow us to add about 350 additional students to the school. Um, it's an ambitious project, project uh, but it is doable. Uh, if Regina were to show you some of the floor plans, I think, that are available, uh, can you do that, Regina? Sure, yep. Now, this is uh, basically a ground floor, it would be cafeteria and uh, area, basically, and some uh, administrative rooms. And then if you'll go to the second, third, fourth, and fifth floors, you'll see how it's been divided into classrooms on all of those floors. Anybody familiar with the building uh, will know that the fifth floor actually has an open patio, which we would uh, uh, propose to close in and create uh, additional floor space for the building. In fact, just recently, we were talking with the uh, SHPO, which is the State Historic Tax Credit people, and they seem to be in favor of our project, uh, but possibly we would not have to have a three-foot setback where those, uh, where the patio currently exists. 
So that would not be a deal killer for us. So we're going to continue working in that direction. Um, the building itself comes with a lot of vacant land. Um, the lot immediately to the left of the building would be in uh, purchased along with the lots behind the building, which run from Gayosa to Salcedo. And then as an additional parcel, it runs back to Cleveland. So there's ample parking available around the building in order to accommodate not only the teachers that will be in that building, but possibly uh, accommodate some of our teachers who are currently parking on the street. So this is, we wanted to give you a heads up that this is a possible growth uh, opportunity for Warren Easton. We are working with a contractor right now, developing the plans. We will be going into permitting uh, phase to see what other obstacles may be in our way. And of course, financing is definitely one of those as well. So it, at this point, it is an ambitious project. It's not anywhere near completed or signed uh, up with uh, proper financing or anything else, but all of the indicators look like we have strong support uh, from the charter school community to um, have this expansion take place. So uh, without taking up too much of your time, I know you have a busy agenda. This is basically a heads up. I'll be glad to answer any questions uh, that uh, I know the answers to. Questions about the project or any? Go ahead, Mary. Um, would you all be thinking about refurbishing the facade of the building to make it a little more attractive? Oh. <laughs> Yes, Mary, that is obviously a... It is an ugly it building. Is, it, is, it is. The building is a nightmare from three sides. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will be making it look a more, much more attractive. I will, we Thank will have you. a 3D rendering of what we think the building will look like uh, shortly, and we'll pass it on to uh, the organization so you can have a concept uh, of what we're, we're looking forward to. Great, thank you. Any other okay, questions yeah. on the phone, dialed in questions or, I know it's very early, but I'm, I'm very happy you're, you're, you all are gonna have the opportunity to expand because right. it's greatly right. needed. Yeah. yeah, we've had a very successful project with the field adjacent to the building, which was the old Montelepri Hospital, which uh, was successfully completed a few years ago. Um, this would be a, a tremendous addition to allowing us to serve more children in the city of New Orleans with a A-rated school. So we're yeah. hoping this opportunity becomes fruitful. And we thank you for your time. Sure. All right. Uh, next on the agenda, uh, unless, Ms. Wilkins, did you want to say anything else about this? I mean, it you looks know, like it's um, sort of <laughs> self-sustaining. So, um, you know, there won't, it doesn't look like students will be traveling back and forth across Canal Street, which is always a plus. Um, you know, yeah, very, being a, if any, yes, we, the, the idea was, uh, to keep it to one grade so that there wouldn't be uh, crossing of the street. So, yes. Sure. That this is all fantastic news. It's uh, fantastic that, uh, vacant buildings coming back into use for sure, especially on, you know, our protected, uh, skyline that is Canal Street as well. So. Last chance for any questions? Well, we will definitely um, keep informed and keep in touch with you all. Um, you know, we can't wait to get back to our regular meeting space. Uh, we yeah. definitely miss it in the Warren Easton <laughs> community. So uh, we appreciate all the work then and time you've given us in the past and uh, hope this moves easily for you <laughs> with this planning. <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you so you. much. We miss you guys too. We're, we're ha ha we'll be very happy to welcome you back as soon as we're able. Thank you. All right. Thank okay. you so much. All right. Thank you guys. Bye. All right. Next on the agenda, uh, Mr. Mutzel. Sorry. I, probably you mind if, uh, Mr. President, do you mind if I jump in now? Uh, I, no, go ahead. Okay. I, I apologize. And I, and I thank you for 
having me. Sorry about the scheduling mix up. Um, I didn't know if I was on this month or next month. And uh, thank goodness for Councilman Banks reaching out to me at the last minute. I was like, no, I thought I was supposed to do it. So glad to be here and won't take up much of your time. Glad to join you again next month uh, as well. I just wanted to, um, first of all, just say thank you for the work that you have been doing um, you know, since the creation of the security district. Um, I think that things have improved, but I, I certainly know that crime is rampant, uh, particularly the car burglaries and break-ins. And, um, you know, unfortunately, I have had the personal experience of someone picking up a sign uh, from my house in my driveway. I live uptown on Valen Street across from Green School and there being a carjacking while the person was the person that was picking up a sign from my house um, literally last Wednesday. And so this came became really personal and real. Um, didn't shock me because I know it's happening in all of our neighborhoods um, and certainly patrolling and cameras in this instance were very helpful. The car was found, but it's happening way too frequently and certainly more resources, which I've been talking to uh, Mayor Le Latoya Cantrell about and Councilman Banks working with him on this for all of our neighborhoods. And so I've been able to identify some money uh, from last year's appropriation that we're gonna be using toward public safety and amplifying the efforts that she's uh, that they have underway. And so we'll be making an announcement about that that will certainly inure to the benefit of all communities. Uh, but more particularly, glad to see my colleague, Representative Matt Willard on the, on the um, call as well, I mean, on the Zoom. Uh, two things, um, there's a lot happening at the federal level and the state level, but a lot of people are stressed out. I'm just gonna go to something that people don't talk about a lot, stressed out and the mental health issues associated with losing your job, navigating unemployment benefits, which seems to be our number one task in constituent services right now. So many people have lost their jobs and it is horrid, the processes. And so just giving people a way, uh, helping them navigate um, state government right now is something that we do every day. And if you have constituents and neighbors that are looking to get help, Jonathan in my office has just been phenomenal uh, every day. He's turned into a, a, a pro at this, um, not involuntarily, but counseling services, um, keeping calm through COVID, there's a hotline and I'm not sure if you're aware of it, 866-310-7977. Uh, um, and it is uh, uh, an avenue to some compassionate counselors who can afford, offer some support and direct you to men mental health and substance abuse counseling services. That's real right now. The fear and anxiety is very, very high. Um, on another note, at the federal level, of course, today, uh, Senate is moving forward with this $1.9 trillion package. It's going to offer a lot of relief to some of the things that the councilmen brought up uh, today with respect to COVID. Uh, there's money directly for state and local governments, also school systems. Uh, so Warren Easton Trends and all the school district broadly will be able to get a direct injection of resources that have been lost as a result of this pandemic. Um, people will get those checks that they need to be able to pay their rent. But the obviously the moratorium on evictions is inadequate, just stopping people from getting evictions. They're still behind in their rent. They need direct payments, rental relief payments, subsidies for landlords and for rental um, renters. And so that's gonna help us with rebuilding our economy. So fully support that. I hope that before this election is over, that stuff gets passed because people need that relief right now. The election is not until March and then a runoff potentially in April and that's too long to wait. So hopefully that gets done before any of this election stuff is over. Um, I do believe that there's a bill, Kirsten Gillibrand, a senator from New York, has about a $120 billion bill for restaurants. And so many of our small restaurants, our business, small businesses are hurting. That, that uh, legislation alone can offer direct relief for, for some of our, um, our uh, local restaurants in, in New Orleans. So fully supportive of that and hoping that that gets done. Uh, but on the campaign side, that's a little more official on the campaign side. Yes, I'm running for Congress. Um, I've been serving in the legislature for 21 years, swinging pretty hard. Um, and I'm proud of my bold and courageous and I believe progressive agenda that I've had for 21 years. And I wanna keep doing that same thing for you in Washington. It's that simple. Uh, when it comes to reproductive freedom or environmental justice or criminal justice reform, I've been there and I've been there when it was tough during the eight years of Bobby Jindal, when he would not sign off on Affordable Care Act and we had to beg and beg and he still didn't do it with legislation filed. He objected to it. 
um, I was there and helped to lead the way as the party chair to get John Bell Edwards elected. And the first thing he did was sign off on Medicaid expansion. Five years later, he's been there since 2015, right? And five years later, 442,000 people now have insurance. Now, um, that means that means a lot. And I'm supportive of Medicare for all because I believe that healthcare is a human right and that people should not have to pay co-pays in premiums, that we should cover that as a government because it's good for a strong economy, for strong families and, and for small businesses shouldn't have to have that in their budgets. We should take care of that and it will make for a greater nation. So I have a lot of information on my website uh, about my candidacy. I'm happy to come back and answer specific questions uh, about my platform. Um, in this district beyond New Orleans, it's between Baton Rouge and New Orleans. It's a huge district, 10 parishes. Uh, there's Louisiana Cancer Alley. You've been hearing a lot about that in the new Biden and Harris administration. Those environmental issues are real as I move around the district. Some of them still exist here. I mean, of course, we have agriculture landfill. We've been talking about it forever, right? And other um, environmental justice issues. But out there in some of those parishes, we need to collectively work against environmental racism and the um, the problems associated with companies and industries not complying with existing law, not even new stuff, existing law um, and, and the emissions. And so clean air and clean water is something that we may take for granted here in this area, but in so many rural communities, particularly black and brown communities, people are suffering. And the CEOs for those companies, by the way, don't live in those parishes where those plants are. And so we can't kick the can. We can't shy away from tough decisions and discussions. So I want to be that person in Washington to be able to uh, to champion those things. And I ask you humbly for your support as I go on that journey. Elections March 20th. Early voting starts March 6th. 40 days and 40 nights. Somebody else had to go through that. Y'all know who I'm talking about. <laughs> and so it's it, it, that the campaign is underway. And I look forward to talking to you more. So hopefully I can come back and talk some more. <laughs> Anybody Fantastic. have any questions? Yeah, any questions for Senator? Okay. Our voting well, resources you. were posted in our newsletter. So, um, you know, just reminding everyone the election is uh, March 20th. Uh, please register to vote if you haven't already. Uh, deadline to do so is February 17th, fast approaching to do registration in person or online February 27th, if you're not already registered or need to change or update your registration. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And y'all have a good evening. Stay safe, master. You as well. Okay. Thank you. All right, uh, going on to our next item, uh, Mr. Mutzel, sorry to, are you ready to present about Energy Wise? I am. Um, can... Yes, we can hear you, but you just got a little choppy for a second. Okay have a little bit of a connection issue earlier, but I think it cleared up. So I'll just keep on talking. And if you have any issues, just let me know and I'll slow down, stop. Sure. Whatever I need to do. All right. So um, I'm dropping, I'll be dropping a few links into the chat bar for folks that are on their telephones and can't see this. Um, I want to either help you save money on your energy bills, get your refunds on your energy bills, um, help you be more environmentally conscious, uh, since uh, just a disclaimer, I do not work for entry, so please do not get your bill is extremely high this last month. I warn you that uh, to expect that your bill continue to be as high next month, just due to the weather that we are having. Um, next week is supposed to be extremely cold, and just want to point out that um, every hour you heat your house, electric heating in your house, it costs you about a dollar fifty an hour to heat your home on average home. So um, those costs add up very, very quickly if you're not conscious about how you're using your energy. So I dropped uh, energysmartnola.com website for it. And if you are on the phone, energysmartnola.com. And the Energy Smart program is a program that was developed by the City Council of New Orleans. It's currently in its 11th year. It is administered by Entergy New Orleans, and it is a rate payer funded program, which means that this program is already factored into rates that you pay to the UV and has been factored in for the last 11 years. The program incentivizes energy efficiency upgrades to New Orleans residents, and since everybody pays into it, everybody is eligible to participate in it, which owners and renters participate in this program. 
Also, the amount of money that goes into the program is greater than all the energy efficiency programs across of Louisiana combined. So, um, oftentimes we say New Orleans is last in a lot of categories. Well, in energy efficiency funding, um, utility funding, we are actually first. I also um, links into the chat bar as I speak here. So this next link that I'm putting in, this is called the energy, um, free home energy assessments. And free home energy assessment, renters, homeowners, does not matter. If you, you can all take advantage of them. And what this means is that a contractor program actually either comes into the physical home. Um, this can now be done virtually as of last year, obviously due to COVID. If you're not comfortable with having um, an energy center in your home, um, then they will ask you questions over the phone about specific things in your house. So the idea is that they use a whole house approach to improving energy efficiency according to um, already established federal guidelines. And during the assessment, the contractor is going to establish how much attic insulation a home has, if that's applicable, the type of heating and cooling that are in the house, um, such as gas or electric, the age of your central air conditioning, the type of lighting in your home, whether it's incandescent, fluorescent, LED, uh, the type of water fuel, water heater fuel, you use, excuse me, and then if you do have any ink bulbs in your house, your LED will be replaced by LEDs free of charge. Some homes are going to qualify for free water saving measures, free smart power strips, and then also free smart thermostats is one giving away. If you are a renter, you will need your landlord to authorize certain upgrades. Um, all that process will be followed through um, fairly simply you um, schedule an appointment and again I did drop a link into the bar into the chat also um, email with all these links again open that he'll put them into the uh, send out a mailer I'm guessing every month or so sure. or a, mm -hmm. if you yeah, have I can do this great. newsletter sure I see one said that I participated in this program here it's super easy totally worth it thank you for the awesome very important one that you need to be aware of. This is probably the most important program that we offer. It's absolutely free whole home weatherization. We call it income qualified weatherization. And renters, owners, both of you can take advantage of this. This is going to receive the free products I mentioned in the prior assessment, light bulbs, water saving measures, thermostats. Um, they will also air seal the entire building. They're going to um, air seal your duct your duct vents for your central air conditioning, if you have central air conditioning. And they'll also give you attic insulation absolutely free of charge. And to qualify, the household income must be at or below 200% of the 2020 federal poverty guideline. And that is how many people are actually living in a home. Um, if you, your neighbor and relative, if they qualify, heap, it's called Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, if you for it, you will know what that is. Um, you automatically qualify for this program because the qualification threshold is lower um, through LIHEAP. So you would automatically qualify for all the free uh, whether it's in the house. Now we also have a, an online marketplace and you can get discounted light bulbs, discounted thermostats, all kinds of goodies at this one. I am going to put this one in the chat box right now for anyone that's following along with me. And just a couple of other things um, in this website on the Energy Smart website, you're going to see that they're in the residential section. There are discounts and rebates for if you need a new water heater. Um, we have $400 rebates for heat pump water heaters. We have $50 rebates for window air conditioners. If you're getting a new central air conditioner unit, up to $500. $25 for dehumidifiers. $50 for refrigerators. $50 for water coolers. And if you have a pool, you get $300 for a pool pump. And I would like an invitation to your house, please. Also, um, if you have a small or large business, or if you work at a small or large business, we're giving away free smart thermostats for all commercial Nest Honeywell thermostats. Also, we to $50 lighting commercial property and up to $100,000 for non-lighting upgrades. So up to $150,000 per business you're eligible for um, as well. But since we're mostly geared towards 
just discussing residential spaces in this uh, meeting. I'll stick with that. And if you all have any questions, I'm about to put my email address into the chat box as well. It's brandonenergyla.org. If anyone has any questions, I realize I do a lot of information, but I'm happy to answer it right now. You see the last question there um, about installing a weather stripping around doors and windows. Your weatherization program handles that? Yeah. So if you if you call um, or I should guess I should put the uh, phone number in there as well, which I'll do after I'm done speaking. But if you get an energy assessment, a free home energy assessment, which was this in the box and they they ought to buy yeah, be small pieces of foam or uh, different weatherization stuff that they can do. They do small upgrades there on the spot as well as when they install new light bulbs for you. Um, and they can definitely help you out with that. If you email me, we'll get your name and number and we do side projects oftentimes at people's houses um, just to sort of get into the community and let them know this program exists. So, so yes is the roundabout answer to that. And you also help promote uh, Greenlight New Orleans uh, rain barrel programs as well, or a partner uh, group. It, I mean, people, but they it's different, same sort of funding source, but different organizations. Okay. So um, I'm I'm all about that for sure, absolutely. Um, but yeah, we're not tied to it in really any any way, shape, or form. Gotcha. Uh, mix up with representatives, three months of phone calls. Um, did you want to go ahead, uh, your personal phone number from yeah. your document as well? Awesome. Number and I'll also ask a the question. Phone. Sure, yes. Yeah. In the chat, oops, I just lost him. Um, there are two different <clears throat> sites. One is, oops. The um, IQW assessment and the other was the other assessment. Ah, there we go. Oops. Yes, IQ request an assessment. What's the difference between those two? IQW stands for income qualified weatherization. Um, okay. If you fill out either of them, they're going to ask qualifying questions either way. So, um, so they're going to get to know right away. E either one will get you where you need to go. But if you know you're income qualified, then the second one is is um, is the quicker the quicker link to get you where you ultimately need to go thank you you're very welcome any other questions about this program i'll definitely put this in a resource page for us and uh make it part of our outgoing monthly newsletters Great. Going um, forward. I, I did forget to mention one thing. Um, sure. We do a monthly deep dive into this program for people that it's it's an overwhelming amount of information. Tomorrow, actually, at 3, 3 to 3.30, it usually only takes 20 minutes, but we block off 30 minutes for it. But uh, you can register to go. It's pretty much one-on-one -on -one counseling. I talk about the program for 10 minutes, and then we ask specific questions to, you know, Every home is obviously different in New Orleans, and so um, it's not always a one-size-fits-all type of situation. So if anyone's interested in you know a little bit more about that is I'll be talking about the same stuff tomorrow, only in much more detail. Sounds like a great opportunity if uh, you're looking to take you up on these offers for sure. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming out and sharing all this information. Appreciate you having me. Is there any representatives from Metropolitan Human Services District on the call? Yes. Awesome. Yes. Is this uh, Mr. Mike. Michael? Yes, it is. All right, go ahead. Okay, well, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, introduce ourselves to you. Uh, if you, those that are listening, if you have not been familiar with us, I'll give you just a real brief uh, description of what we do. The Metropolitan Human Services District, and we pretty much focus on three areas, uh, offering therapy and counseling for people who may be suffering from mental illness, uh, addictive disorders, and, and also intellectual developmental uh, disabilities. Um, this is uh, a pretty trying time right now for all of us, as we know, 
and uh, a lot of people are, are are dealing with those issues, mental illness and and uh, addictive disorders. And those numbers, uh, as we go through this pandemic, those numbers are going up. But we are here for you. We are pretty much set up to serve the uninsured or the underinsured. So with us, uh, Medicaid is what you need to have. And those that may need our services, if you don't have Medicaid, then we will assist you in applying for it. Uh, we have several locations around. We have five uh, clinics around. Uh, Algiers uh, on General de Gaulle, Central City on St. Phillips, on Phillips Street. Um, Charter's Pontchartrain, which is in Legion Field now out near the river. New Orleans East on Reed. And in St. Bernard Parish, we do serve three different parishes, but we have one in St. Bernard uh, on uh, St. Claude Avenue. So we serve only three parishes, which is Arlene, Clackamas, and St. Bernard. Uh, and We'd be more than happy to to come out and do a lengthy presentation if if you'd like, uh, but we are here for those that may need us. Uh, our number is 568-3130. That's a 504 code, obviously. 568-3130. And we're here and happy to help those that may need our services. I appreciate the opportunity. Problem. Do you do any uh, do you do any services over the phone for support, or is it everything is mostly in person? Um, there, there could be. Yes, you could call that very same number, and they'll instruct you on what we can do over the phone and what we cannot do. But yes, there could be. Wonderful. Um, there are the protocols for your services right now. I mean, understanding the relief of the community, but I guess. Uh, any additional precautions pe need, people need to be aware of when seeking your services? The, well, right now, the only precautions, if you go to one of our clinics, they're going to first screen you for, for the uh, COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, uh, no. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah, please, um, thank you for doing your work within the community with mental health. Definitely a much needed resource. Uh, I know you've come to our meetings before and, and thanks for reaching out once again. Um, I know you do other sorts of presentations and informative meetings. So definitely please come back and, and let us know more. We'll we'll do a focus meeting on something at one point in time. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Again, we appreciate uh, the opportunity to present to you. Thank you for having us. Sure thing. Uh, open to the floor. Anyone wanted to bring up any topics of discussion or? items that we should approach for next meeting. Um, give you a little board updates. Um, the, the board recently uh, voted to help support, I'm trying to find the exact verbiage. Um, Thomas, are you still on? I am. Can you speak to the Grant funding that we just voted to support? Uh, with Crescent Care? Yes, please. Oh, brilliant. All right. So uh, Jasmine Davis from Crescent Care reached out to me uh, regarding support and securing grant funding for Crescent Care and the outreach in this case would specifically point back towards uh, raising awareness about COVID-19 and the vaccinations and to change attitudes to uh, the population they want to reach will be um, typically minority African-American uh, communities because there is a reticence within that community and distrust uh, about COVID-19 and the implementation of the uh, inoculation regime. And so what they're trying to do is uh, basically increase the overall city health outcome by encouraging people to get the inoculation and know more about it. Because Crescent Care has a uh, anchor 
off a of two lane by broad, there is a mid city presence. And we understand the population uh, for mid city is majority African American and uh, 15 above uh, would be about 18 to 19 percent with about nine percent with the uh, thing like 65 and above so that, that's a that's a that's a sizable population of age and by uh uh demographic so we fully supported it and uh so with luck they'll secure grant funding to be able to encourage people to uh get the shot overall if anybody has questions feel free to ask we signed on to help them secure funding also to serve uh people living with a community living with hiv as well um i think thomas already approached on that subject but yeah uh, yeah i didn't bring the hiv bit up but sorry that was the one bit that that escaped me because I'm, I'm working off a of memory here i know i called you out on purpose but uh since you were here uh <laughs> just to give a last update some of our board business that we've gone through and currently considering um more business with the board to support a letter um, with the Greenway, Friends of Lafitte Greenway board and their commitment to their master plan in, in relation to the um, proposed development uh, at, at the old sign shop. Um, I think we almost have enough votes to pass that signatory on that we'll be signing on an agreement with uh, the Greenway board in supporting their recommitment to their ideals of keeping public space publicly open and available and reducing, if not any impact to private development on the property. So um, if you want any more information on that, please reach out to the board. Uh, any information for, uh, for us and all of our lovely board members this evening, many of you, thank you for attending. Um, and if that's everything, we're going to call it a night. So thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Chris. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Practice social distancing. <laughs>